the going. Just about to get started here. One more minute. I uh, handed out the presentation in a PDF format so you could either follow along or have them for future. And uh, yeah, and I'll put this on my YouTube channel. And um, I've got all my monthly uh, webinars on my YouTube channel. So you can go there. It's just Ed LaCara. And um, yeah, subscribe helps me out and um, allows me to do some cool things like links and stuff. But let's see who's all out there right now. Let's uh, say hello. Let me know that you can um, let me know that you can see the chat. You can see the handouts. And I am coming in loud and clear. All these lights are messing with me. It's weird. Okay. I just put a poll up. I want to try this. I've never done this before. So there's a, uh, if you go into polls, I don't know how this works. I've never, I've never done it. And I do, I do uh, webinars every week, but, um, I just put in there about a poll, answer those, answer the question. Um, just so I can see how this thing works. That's kind of cool that we can, um, for inner, for kind of engagement. Hi, Hannah. All right, so it's 7.02. Let's get started. I'm gonna share my, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through these, I got about 25 slides. Ask questions as we go, but I just wanna let you know, I can't see the questions. So, um, just ask the questions and then that way I'll get to them at the end, uh, but I can't see them during. So tonight we're gonna to talk about Achilles tendinopathy, um, current evidence, Ways to Control Pain and Protect and Strengthen. Uh, my name is Ed LaCara. I'm board certified in sports medicine and rehabilitation. I uh, practice full-time in Dallas, Texas at my clinic, uh, Body Lounge Park Cities. Um, I teach for smart tools and write their education. Primarily, I've been doing blood flow restriction training as of the last couple of years, but I used to be with Rock Tape and wrote a lot of their content or at least helped write a lot of their content. Um, I've written some content and taught for TRX and currently trying to finish my first book uh, about blood flow restriction training. So my contact information is up there. If you ever have any questions, please reach out. Okay. So first of all, what, what is the Achilles tendon? If, there, if, there's a, if there's a problem, where is it? I think most of us know this. Um, it's a broad, strong ligament. It is the tendon of the gastrocnemius and soleus. So the picture on the left is the soleus, which sits deep. Soleus like fish, like a fillet, like big flat. Um, and then the Achilles tendon, you can see with the combination of the uh, soleus and the gastrocnemius. During push-off and running, it's exposed to about 7x 
body weight, which is just about the point of failure, believe it or not. So I get, I see a lot of runners and a lot of CrossFitters. And the two times that I see these primarily are running and I see them with CrossFitters doing double unders, um, lots of stress on that Achilles and not really sure what to do about it. So if you've seen any of my presentations in the last six or 12 months, I've been using this graph, which is a capacity versus demand. Um, as long as you keep the capacity below or keep the capacity above the demand of the activities that you're asking of it, you stay injury free. But once you get that green line, which is demand above your capacity, then you're going to get injured. And what happens is once we get injured, we typically start to reduce function depending on the severity. And so we want to try to prevent that as much as we can. And we also want to get people training back as fast as possible, even if it's modified training. I, I kind of am known for keeping people training um, even when they're injured because I want them to stay in the habit of exercise. So talking about tendons, since this is a tendinopathy talk, they're very complex structures. Personally, they're the hardest thing that I treat, like the Achilles tendinopathy, the lateral epicondylitis, the medial epicondylitis, the teller tendonitis. They take the longest and are the most difficult. So tendons are complex. They're multiple layers of tightly packed collagen fibers that are produced by tenocytes and tenoblasts. Tenocytes are mechanoreceptive cells that are able to change their gene expression in response to demand. It's really important to know because we want to exercise these things. I don't, I don't think that we can just do passive modalities and get a good outcome. These long-term change is going to be, especially when they're chronic tendons, they need to be exercised and we need to load the crap out of them. So I'm going to show you some examples of ways to do that. Just as a definition, tendonitis is injury to the tendon that causes an inflammatory response and presence of inflammatory cells. Tendinopathy is an injury to the tendon that involves degeneration and failed healing, clinical syndromes of tendon pain and thickening, diagnosed primarily by all history and physical examination findings. And then tendinosis is the histopathological term used when a tissue sample shows absence or minimal presence of inflammatory cells. So just keep that in mind. I typically don't use the term tendinitis unless um, the injury was within about two weeks and otherwise it essentially comes into a tendinosis or a tendinopathy. All right, so the term tendinopathy is preferred to tendinitis because of the presence of a disordered and degenerative healing process, not inflammation in the pathologic tendon. So when we think about this, if somebody has an Achilles tendinopathy, probably anti-inflammatories aren't gonna help too much because there is no white blood cells. They tend to help a little bit, but mostly in the acute phase. I like to tell patients that these things look like frayed ropes over time. They're not clean. And that, that tissue where I'm pointing the arrows, this, these little frayed ropes need to be re regenerated and we can only do that through remodeling of exercise. Um, if we look at the literature, mainstays of initial treatment for tendinopathy are active activity modification, going from running to maybe biking or swimming, relative rest, pain control, rehabilitative exercise, and protection. So rehabilitative exercise in this um, study um, was a big component of tendinopathy. So we just got to make sure we're emphasizing that. Patients need to understand treatment can take up to six months for full resolution. Patients hate hearing that for sure. So cryotherapy, ice has a role in controlling pain in the acute phase for sure. non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and corticosteroids have a role in treatment despite the lack of histological evidence of inflammation. Short-term use of these drugs reduces pain and increases range of motion, which can assist patients in completing rehabilitative exercises. Uh, we want to try to avoid corticosteroids, um, other things like topical nitroglycerin, neurotoxins, stem cell, platelet-rich plasma injections, or additional non-surgical treatment options if what you've done has failed. All right, so let's talk about tendinopathy of the Achilles tendon. Um, it's divided into several categories. Number one, insertional tendinitis. Number two, peritonitis, 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 couldn't get that out. Non-insertional tendinosis. And so I'm going to talk about all three of these. So if you answered three on that poll, you were correct. All right. First one, 
insertional tendonitis. This is the one that I commonly see. This is typically um, showing with a Haglund's deformity, which is this big bump over here on the lateral aspect. You can see the angle here and then it dives. So this should be nice and straight and this is diving in. So we've got some sort of varus formation here. Um, we typically get underactive peroneals and overactive tibialis posterior. I like to use a valgus wedge. Sorry, my PowerPoint's going crazy. I like to use a valgus wedge with these. It takes the pressure off right away. This patient came in yesterday um, and I'm kind of going to take you through how I treated him. Um, but the wedge gave him immediate relief. And I'm not talking about a heel wedge. Heel wedges have been shown to, um, especially in people that have decreased range of motion of the uh, doris, uh, ankle dorsiflexion, um, has been shown to make things worse. So we want to use a wedge if we need to, but not necessarily a uh, lift. So we're gonna talk about the differences are orthotics for supportive? Are they well? Are they well supported? No. Uh, yes, orthotic, orthotics are very well supported, specifically over the counter orthotics. And I'll show you what I use. Heel pads not well supported for long term use. I will sometimes use them for temporary relief, especially if somebody has a race or something and they've got to compete. Um, but I don't like them for long term because I think it reduces the length of the uh, gastroxoleus complex and ends up giving you um, lack of dorsiflexion over time. We use a heel wedge like these instead. This is a posting heel wedge that I use for that um, for that varus calcaneus that I was showing you before. And you just put these in the outside aspect of their heel and it'll force them. You can see here where we're putting it. And it forces them to take pressure off of what's causing that Haglund's deformity. So this is for insertional um, tendinopathy or tendinitis, however they're described. These are the barefoot science strengthening system that I use. There's, um, depending on which brand you get or which uh, model, I use the ones that are active and they have six different levels. So we start with this red bump and it strengthens the arch and the foot. And then once that foot has adapted to this one, then we go to the next one. That usually takes about a week, a week and a half. Then we go to the next one. Then we go to the next one. Then we go to the next one. And I keep building up the arch. And so this is less of an orthotic. It's more of a... Um, foot strengthening system. Um, and I've uh, had really good success with these over the last few years. Okay, this one is the paratenonitis. So this is higher up. So the insertional is here. Up here is where we'll typically see this. It's an inflammatory process. So this is slight degenerate, not degeneration, it's slight inflammation of the tendon. And I would see this, you know, a couple of days after doing double unders or something. You can start to see a palpable lump that forms above the Achilles attachment. We want to reduce swelling with ice and um, a night brace is recommended to maintain length and also stress the tissue for relief. Non-insertional tendinosis. This is a degenerative non-inflammatory process. It's going to show up basically um, in that same spot as the acute that we talked about. This is just going to be longer term, three, four, five, six months. Tissue needs to be remodeled. We need to do heavy eccentric exercise or lengthening exercise in order to remodel that tissue. While we're doing that, we want to keep the pain below a five out of 10 on the uh, pain scale. If we're going above a five, we're probably causing damage. So let's talk about some treatment approaches. Number one, I, look, I like to look at mobility of the lower extremity. So I have a piece of tape on my floor that's four inches from the from the wall they put their they put their toe on that and they drive their knee into the wall if their knee can't touch the wall keeping their heel flat with their toe on the line that means they have a lack of motion in their ankle dorsiflexure the other thing i like to look at is the big toe the big toe requires 42 to 45 degrees and of range of motion otherwise we can't drive off the glute we have some uh, limitations um, and big toe self-mobilization is your best bet along that tissue. I also use some shockwave and some other things, but I'll show that in a little bit. Okay. Some other things I use in order to increase range of motion, I'll use some voodoo floss around the ankle. And so I'm voodoo flossing the ankle joint. 
And this is something that patients can do at home or you can do at home um, in order to increase range of motion of the ankle if you do that little wall test and you can't get your knee to touch. There's a lot of great evidence for shockwave therapy for the Achilles tendon tendinopathies. Um, I listed some here. Um, kind of goes on and on. There's quite a bit. What is pressure wave or shock wave? Um, it is regenerative in nature. So if you have a degenerative process, the reason I bought mine was because I was getting these tendinopathies in that were in the degenerative stages and I needed to really repair them. And this really helped me speed it up. It's also known as shock wave or extracorporeal shock wave therapy or ESWT or sound wave or acoustic wave. Mine's from stores medical. Um, it really helps me bridge the gap and allows me to get more exercises by reducing pain, stimulating the uh, tissue for repair. Okay, I just listed a bunch of other biological effects. Usually takes me about three to five treatments, about five days apart. I use coupling gel, about 3000 pulses per area, and then biofeedback, meaning the patient tells me where their most of their pain level is. Uh, lots of research backing it up. 90% um, success rate for heel pain, 76% success rate for Achilles pain. I have nearly 100% success rate if they combine these with heavy loading um, exercises as well. So here you'll see where I'm attacking. I'm attacking areas of the calf that are causing restriction. And I'm also going to attack where the actual degeneration is. So I don't just go after the area of pain. I go after the area of dysfunction as well. If I have an ankle mobility issue, I will use a band to pull back the tibia and the fibula, open up the joint, and then use the shockwave in the tight tissue, which is usually on this medial gastroc, and have them drive their knee into the wall while I'm using the shockwave therapy. Very, very effective in getting range of motion back and, and releasing tissue. If you wanna learn more about shockwave, uh, Bob and Paul are around. You can give them a call or send them an email. Um, great technology, and um, I'm very glad I got it. I also will use uh, needling with TENS unit. So you can see here where I'm needling for this Achilles tendinopathy up in this medial gastroc. That's normally where I find most of the restriction. I don't tend to needle directly into the uh, Achilles tendon. I usually go above it. And then I'll tape it for some support. Here's just a way that I used kinesiology tape, putting the tissue under stretch, going up and around, and then going all the way up into the calf. Strengthening, I think strengthening needs to start at the foot once you have range of motion at the ankle joint. So start off with range of motion. Once you have range of motion, then we go with strengthening. So uh, there's a lot of literature, not a lot. There's some literature around um, strengthening the flexor digitorum helping take pressure off of the Achilles tendon. So this is one of my go-tos. Even if the Achilles tendon hurts, I can start strengthening through the foot. So um, you're gonna do eight times, eight times 40 reps per day. And what you do is you start with the toes up. That's why the band is lifting and then press down. And then I do it for the big toe as well. I separate the big toe from the small toes because the big toe will dominate with flexor digitorum longus. If you have insertionals, insertional Achilles tendinopathy, when you're able to, you wanna start doing some eccentric loading. So I use a two foot up, one leg down. So you see I'm starting, I'm starting with two feet so that my whole body weight isn't just in the one leg. And then I'm just using one leg to go down. And I have a weight in my right hand here. And you wanna use as much weight as possible in order to, um, get fatigue within about 15 reps. So um, some people I will have use a backpack. Some people use a dumbbell. It just depends on the weight and what they can tolerate. For non-insertional Achilles tendinopathy, we want to take the heel below the toes. So we do it on a stair step. So again, start with two legs up and you're just going to go one leg down and the heel needs to be below the toes. And again, 15 reps, two to three sets, use weight heavy enough for fatigue, but not for insertional Achilles, Achilles tendinopathy. And I wouldn't do this in the acute phase. I would do this when I need to remodel the tissue because eccentrics tend to uh, remodel tissue better than concentrics. 
And then I also use blood flow restriction training. It helps me get to fatigue much faster. So you could do it here if you wanted to isolate the soleus, you can see the cuffs are on the limbs. And then here, if I wanna isolate the gastrocnemius, um, and it's just going to fatigue out that tissue much, much faster. All right, so with Achilles tendinopathy, first, where's the location? Is it insertional or non-insertional? Is it acute or non-acute? Meaning, am I gonna treat it as a tendinopathy or am I gonna treat it as tendinitis? Tendinitis, I'll treat with ice. Tendinopathy, I don't think it really matters. I think um, with the tendinopathy, you've got to repair it by uh, strengthening. Um, do you need to use an insert like an orthotic? Do you need to increase range of motion? Do you need to get the calf to relax? And you always have to strengthen with these. And education on time, expectation. Patients need to know that it's going to take a while. Otherwise, they'll get frustrated very quickly. All right, so I'm going to lock out. All right, let's see. So um, let me stop sharing this. Okay. Hey, what's up, Matt? Um, uh, which tip do I use? I use, uh, unless I'm right on the bone, I use the um, ceramic tip, the gray tip, when using shockwave. Matt, did you see the sides? Any other, any other questions? Oh, but you couldn't, you couldn't see the slides as I was, as I was, um, presenting. Hmm. Weird. I shared them. Hmm. I was sharing my screen. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we had this problem before, uh, technology, I swear. So weird. All right, well, you got the slides and uh, hopefully you're able to follow along. If you have any questions, reach out. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll send something out for next month. I don't know what I wanna talk about next month. Maybe, I don't know, if anybody has any ideas, shoot me a note. But, um, but anyway, hope everybody had a great Christmas and happy new year and holidays and uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks.